the Lord, saints, and welcome to today's broadcast from the Solid Rock, featuring Dr. Herbert B. Robinson, Jr. We are glad you joined us, and we pray that today's message will be an added value to your life. Welcome, my beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to this segment of From the Solid Rock. Please say this with me. My hope is in God. My trust is in God. My faith is in God. And because of that, I anchor my belief in God. Thank you for joining us. Please enjoy the message. Thanks for joining us. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Deuteronomy 32nd chapter? And the 15th verse. In there, in the King James Version, you will find these words recorded. It says, But Jeshuran waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. That's Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, and the 15th verse. What we have here is Moses' song, which is a tone that is poetically set for Israel to experience God's mercy and vengeance. Even though Moses had led the Israelites out of slavery and oppression into a place where they could be one people, God had a message for his people who had forsaken him. Israel developed an ungrateful and rebellious spirit towards God, despite the history that they had in their Israeli records. God is not pleased with his people when they purposely discount what he has done for them. Our nation is like that today. We have not cared to remember how God has saved this nation from destruction. We have not forgotten the history of this nation, where we've had the brutality of slavery and oppression. We've had racism and unequal rights to other people. Some of that still smolders today, as evidenced by some of everyday's experiences. No matter how low we sink, God's word can reach any of us. Now, Jeshurun, which is a term of endearment to the people of God, had sank to new lows. They had waxed fat and kicked back. They had become lax in their worship and cut back in their praises of God. The writer says, they began to become thick and sleek and have forsaken God. Not only had God made them physically, he provided and made them a spiritual salvation. Once Jeserans became fat in their flesh, they became weak in their spirits and then began to forget about God. They forgot about God because they scorned the rock of their salvation. There's a message there that lets us know that prosperity can weaken your spirit. The writer of this passage appears to be unknown, but one thing he or she does is that despite Jeshurun's actions, God's reactions remain faithful. That's good news for us today. It's good news for us to hear because we act a lot like Jeshurun. God sends them a preacher who says, give ear, O heavens, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. You'll see that right there in verse 1. Then he says in verse 2, My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. The preacher's song. It must be noted here that the preacher is the most important, functuary, up-to-date voice in any age of humankind. The preacher deals with the values that no civilization can exist without. The preacher reminds humankind that a response to the greatness of God 
is imperative. We owe God the praise. God is greater than everything that he has created. He is not limited to the finiteness of things that he has made. God is like a rock. As a matter of fact, God is the rock. Verse 4 says this, He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Now we're told in verse 7 here that we ought to remember the days of old. Many of us want to make America great again. But you haven't gone back far enough, America, to be great again. Read what the scripture says to us tonight. It says, consider the years of thy generations. Ask the father, your father, and he will show thee. Ask the elders, and they will tell thee. I've sat at the feet of my father, Dr. H.B. Robinson Sr., all of my life. And I now sit at the feet of my current father, Dr. L.K. Curry. And both of them have told me over the years of my preaching, that we have to remember our history because it is the memory of our history which is the essence of our worship. Now, we have been a lot like Jeshuran. We have provoked God to jealousy by chasing strange gods. We are practicing things in the church and the world that are abominations to God. God has made us struggle, however, and he has made us struggle because that is the necessity for development. And I think that is one of the key issues with us today, my beloved. We don't want to struggle. And if we don't struggle, we shall not develop. So our struggles are not over just because we've prospered from the American dream. We still have some developing to do because we are sacrificing to demons and not sacrificing to God. The writer here, he says that we are unmindful of the rock that formed us and created us. And believe you me, my beloved, that we seem to think that we're responsible for our own fortune. There's nothing that we have that God hasn't given to us. Anything that we have is by his grace and by his mercy. The Bible tells us in Acts, the 17th chapter and the 30th verse, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. My beloved, that is what God's mercy is all about. Giving you time to repent for where you've fallen short. Until you repent and be convicted, God said, I will hide my face from them. It's right here in the 32nd chapter. He says, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be. My beloved, if you read between the lines, that's God's vengeance. To see what you will become for not taking advantage of his mercy by repenting and becoming his child. So God has called us a perverse generation, as the scripture says, who have no faithfulness to him. My beloved, you have faith in God, if you ask him for it. In other words, if you have faith in God, he will restore you. And once you are restored, he will receive you if that is your desire. If it's not, you're entitled to believe what you would like. But you can still receive God's grace and avoid his vengeance by calling on him from the solid rock. We hope that you are still praying with us during this broadcast. Now, let's return to the message. When 
I say from the solid rock. There's a scripture in Psalm 71 and 5. And I can share that with you as we bring this to a close. It says this. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. For all of my days, all I can ever remember is being in favor with the Lord, being in church. From my earliest days, I used to stand on a pew as a baby and listen to my father preach the word of God. I have no problem standing up when I hear the preacher preaching, no matter who he is, who she is, or where they're from. All of my hope is in God. All of my trust is in God. My faith is in God, and it has been that from the days of my youth. I have been on that solid rock for a long time. I first experienced God at a very, very early time in my life. My father was a pastor. My mother is a missionary. My grandmother was a missionary. They always had something good to say about God. God has taken care of them, has taken care of me. God has given me this opportunity to share a word with you globally, locally, and right there in your home. And I'm hoping that God's word can reach your heart today. It's no secret for what God has done for me. It was no secret when the Lord said to his disciples, who do men say that I am? The disciples said, you're <laughs> Isaiah. Some said Jeremiah. Then he asked Peter, who do you say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ. And he said, flesh and blood has not told you that, Peter. But that came directly from the Spirit of God. And I know for you theological students and you professors out there, I may have not said that according to the way that you've taught it, but I do paraphrase a lot of God's word. One of the issues about us sharing the word is that we try to be too technical about it. Let's just be real about God's word. Say it how it really is. You won't be out of order. Speak your heart. And so Peter spoke his heart and said, Thou art the Son of God. And the Lord said to Peter, Thou art Peter, meaning that you are who you are, Peter. And I know that through the theological studies, it says that Peter's name is meant to be stone, that his name is rock. But I want you to know here today that Jesus is the rock. He said, upon this rock I build my church, and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so it is with that thought that we have developed this series called From the Solid Rock. We stand firm on the solid rock of God. All other ground is seeking sand. At least that's what the homologist has said. He said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean, wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The only solid rock that there is, my beloved, is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So because of his anointing and because of his power, we bring to you from the solid rock. And I believe that through this series of sermons and teachings brought to us by the Bell Global Network TV, that somebody will benefit. If it's just one person out of the entire globe that says, what must I do to be saved? This is all worth it. We hope that you are still praying with us during this broadcast. Now, let's return to the message. prayer that there are more of you who will turn to Christ as a result of 
this broadcast. I don't believe that I'm out of my element because history has shown me otherwise. Just like anyone else, I've been a little slow about moving to doing this kind of outreach ministry. But when I think about my life and where it came from, how my parents were always reaching out to lead people to Christ, whether it be through Sunday school, vacation Bible school, revivals, there's always something going on in our home about getting folks saved. My father, he raised me a lot around a lot of great preachers who are some still living, some have gone on to be with the Lord. And I thank God for all that they have poured into me that I might be able to share with others. I've been around some of the greatest preachers that this country has ever known. I dare not call out their names because if I was to forget someone, then I'd feel really bad. But I will mention the fact that two of the greatest preachers that have helped me more than anything have been Dr. H.B. Robinson Sr. and Dr. L.K. Curry. Both of them have told me exactly how things can be in the ministry, how difficult it is to lead people to Christ. In this life, you've got to toe the road. You cannot waver. You cannot fall by the wayside. Jesus said that there were some that fell on stony ground, there were seeds that fell in the bushes, and then there were seeds that fell on good soil. As you do know, those seeds that fell on the stony ground, the sun came out and burned them up, and they didn't take root. Then you have those seeds that fell into the bushes, the weeds, the chaff, and they choked the plants. I can't be choked, my beloved, because I was thrown into good soil. I was thrown into good soil, and even to this day, I claim Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I thank God for him being the Lord and God that he is to me. I've always been taught Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 would help me all the days of my life. That is to trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and to lean not unto thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I've lived by that. Because God has gotten me out of some things that I didn't know how I would make it. I'm not fool enough to think that I did it on my own. It's because of God's grace and because of God's mercy that I am who I am. Make no mistake about it. I've had my faults. I've had my mistakes. I've committed sins. I've done things that God was not pleased with. But you know, my beloved, God's grace and his mercy never run out. The Bible said he's slow to anger and he's plenteous in mercy. And God has extended a lot of mercy towards me. I'm just hoping that he has enough left for you because he certainly has given me quite a bit. So I trust in God with all my heart. And because of that, I anchor my belief in God. No matter what may happen, no matter what I go through, I anchor my belief in God. And you know from that, if you look at I Anchor My Belief in God, that's an acronym to say, I am big. I am big because I am God's child. I am big because I won't let the devil belittle me. I am bigger than my circumstances. I am bigger than my problems. I am bigger than my shortcomings. I am not going to be inferior to anything. But I extend myself to God because God has made me who I am. He is the great I am. And if there's anything that I speak about God in terms of I am, I am what he says that I am. I am his child. I am saved by his name. I am washed in his blood. I am filled with his Holy Ghost. I am who I am because God says that I am. And I hope and pray that as we go through these next few days of serving the Lord through the broadcast, that you too might realize the God in you, how big you can become, how you can overcome sicknesses, overcome hardships, overcome those things that have been bottling you down. I'm not speaking of a prosperity ministry here. That's totally out of my element. 
I'm here to tell you about the word of God. If you trust in God, all else will fall into place. I thank God today for all that he has done for me, and I hope that you will realize how much he's done for you. It's truly a blessing to be associated with this BGN TV because if I had not gotten hooked up, well, there I go again using my street terms. But that just goes to show you the reality of who I am. I don't mind using street terms every now and then to express my feelings about who I am and the God that I serve. I'll tell anyone in the streets that I serve a living God. I'll tell anybody anywhere else that I serve a wonderful God. And I hope and pray that you get to know this God like I've gotten to know him. He's everything to me. As a matter of fact, I tell you what, if you like to worship with us, you can find us at the True Love Missionary Baptist Church. The address is 8200 Tyerman Avenue in Detroit, Michigan at 48204. If by chance you'd like to give us a call, you can reach us at 313-931-1177. I'll repeat that number again. That's 313-931-1177. Someone from our church will be glad to answer your call, and you can reach us there at the True Love Missionary Baptist Church on 8200 Tyerman Avenue. We'd love for you to come and share with us one day. They just might get a chance to hear me preach. I preach every Sunday at 7 a.m. and 11.15. And then, of course, we do have some afternoon services. But just in case Sunday mornings are not for you because you've got to work or because you've got other things that you need to do, you can catch us on a Wednesday night at our church at our Bible study. It starts at 6 p.m. and we're done by 7.30. Please join us and become a part of us because we'd love to have you there. Hope to see you there soon. And if we don't see you there at the True Love Missionary Baptist Church, we hope to see you again here at the BGN TV where we have From the Solid Rock. And just one more thing. If we don't see you at the church and we don't see you here, we hope that we see you on the other side. My beloved, we thank you. God bless you. We hope that you were blessed by the message for the day, and we look forward to you joining us again at the same time next week. Have a great life and be empowered by saying, I anchor my belief in God. This is your girl Vicki Winans and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi everybody. I'm telling you everything that happened to me that was good, God. Grace and peace family. This is Bishop Marvin Sapp and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Clifton Davis, and you're watching Bell Global Network.